hello, do you hear me all right? Yes, okay. So sorry for the technical issues. <laughs> they should be solved now. Um, my name is Pablo and I work as a DevOps at Forgeflow. And I will be speaking to you about uh, how we are uh, monitoring uh, ORU deployments with Rafana. And yeah. So um, many of you, I guess, uh, have heard by now of uh, monitoring and are familiar with some of the related concepts. I'm just going to skim over a few of, of them, uh, the main ones that we will be uh, treating during the presentation. And well, uh, the, the, core, uh, um, the core concept of, of uh, monitoring uh, are these three pillars of observability. And they are basically uh, logs, metrics, and traces. Uh, each of them has their own, um, has their own particularities. Uh, usually what we are exposed most uh, as programmers might be logs. Uh, they are in all applications and they give us uh, information about what's happening uh, at a given point uh, in the system, in a specific component of the system. And they are, uh, um, they, are, um, they have a variable overhead, uh, which means they, they can vary, uh, the, their, the rate of, uh, of them can vary uh, according to user demand. So if a lot of users are accessing our application, we might have more logs. And if none are accessing, we might have none. Uh, metrics, on the other hand, uh, are usually uh, constant. And these are uh, some kind of data that we extract from an application or system uh, in a given Linux system, it could be something like the load average of, of the system at, at that given uh, point in time. And that metric will be repeated periodically, uh, maybe every minute, every 30 seconds, or however you want to, to do it. And, and that could be, for our case, uh, a metric in Odoo, such as the time that a request uh, takes to be processed, or the time that Odoo spends uh, doing a query in the database, uh, such things. And then uh, traces are a bit more complicated. Uh, they are not a single thing. They, they are not an event, but a relation of events. So essentially, if we have a complex application that has different layers, uh, a trace might uh, have some information about any of these given components and will give us uh, the, the relation between them. Um, this is useful, uh, most of all, to uh, correlate with, with logs, for instances. And well, this is a bit out of scope of, of this presentation, uh, because otherwise it would be a bit more complex, and I haven't delved into it so much. So we'll be focusing on logs and metrics. Now, you might be wondering why we would want to choose Grafana and not some other established um, solution like the Elk stack with Elasticsearch and Kibana Logstash or some other alternative that might uh, be popular as well. And why, while you can choose whatever you want, I'm going to give you some reasons uh, wi by which you might choose uh, Grafana over, over others. The first of all is that it is a very complete solution. You might think that, or you might have heard that Grafana is mainly a dashboard visualization system, and that is true. It, it started as, as one, but over the time it has expanded, uh, and now it has a, a lot of components the, that treat, well, everything that I mentioned previously, everything from logs, metrics, traces, and even some other stuff that uh, we won't get into. Now, one of uh, the benefits of, of Grafana, or benefits maybe, I should put it, uh, strong points of Grafana, uh, is that it is non-monolithic and it has an extensible design. It is non-monolithic because you can choose what components you use of, of the whole ecosystem. You might want to only choose the visualization part, the logs, the metrics, or, or whatever, a combination of, of all of them. And it is extensible because there are many ways in which a user or a company might extend their functionality by um, 
working plugins and some uh, other uh, stuff that Grafana uh, lets users uh, interact with, uh, like dashboards and, and things we'll go into later. The other very important thing, in my opinion, is that it has a very uh, abundant documentation. And it's not only abundant, but it is uh, really good. It is up to date. It is useful. It gives examples and some uh, tutorials on how to do things. And so it is quite easy to get started. Uh, this, this might not sound like something um, that important, but in my experience, some, some software uh, does not have this actually comprehensive documentation and makes doing things with it uh, quite harder. Uh, so I think that's quite important. Then there's also the fact that it is open source. So if you wanted, you could do it yourself, self-host uh, the whole ecosystem and do it your own. Um, and then uh, you can also, if you have any issues with any component of the system, you can contribute a fix just like Odoo. So, uh, you can be part of, of the ecosystem as well. And well, as, as a result of all of the above, it has a very active community. And well, this is, this is great because if you have a problem, that means you can get a solution easily by asking said community. In particularly, uh, Grafana has a, a dedicated forum where all kinds of uh, problems get uh, asked and, and more, more often than not solved. And, and this, again, uh, this, act this active community uh, makes user-based content uh, really accessible. So users that uh, are using a given application might develop a dashboard for it, so everyone can benefit from it. There are also, there's also uh, automation, so maybe some like um, um, repetitive tasks that you might not want to do by hand every time. Well, th th there are many many um, scripts and Ansible roles and, and everything that you can reuse. So that's nice as well. And, and then um, we come to the point of, well, how can you uh, actually get started easily if, if that's what you said, no, you, it's quite easy. Well, the, the, the great thing uh, about uh, Grafana is that they have uh, this cloud service uh, which Although it has a paid variant, it also offers uh, a free tier, which is uh, free like uh, forever, essentially. So it's not a, a free trial. It's not uh, get a week or 30 days and test with it. You could uh, potentially use it for as long as you, as you want, as long as they don't change the terms of license. Um, but yeah, that makes it quite useful. And well, this, this Grafana stack is something that you could potentially do yourself by self-hosting all of the components. You could self-host uh, Loki and then Prometheus and then all of the things that, that make this, uh, this stack and, and essentially um, have more or less what they offer. The, the good thing about it is that, well, they, get, they give it to you so you don't have to worry. You can just uh, focus on developing um, your configuration files on how you send uh, data to the system and not have to deal with all of the particularities of setting uh, such a setup, which, I mean, it's, it's feasible, but it's a bit um, complex. So, well, and, and, and as well as, as having this free tier, the cloud system, this, this cloud offering has some integrations that are exclusive to it. And this uh, applies to some dashboards that come um, out of the box, configurations that you can uh, plug into uh, the, the collector system that I'll show you in a minute. And then some access controls, which if you are exposing all of your system publicly, uh, as in you are sending um, logs to a centralized server from a lot of different servers, well, you, you want access control. You, you don't want to uh, have some um, server be leaked and, and then everyone can send logs to it. Uh, so, yeah. Now, here's one of the components that makes this work and it's Grafana Alloy. Uh, really, it was named Grafana Agent and, well, essentially it's a distribution of the Open Telemetry Collector, which just to say that it gets, it can get metrics and logs and traces from a lot of sources and it uh, kind of 
funnels them to where you tell them. It has a, a common syntax for a lot of components. So um, it's not uh, only for a specific source. You can use Loki, Prometheus, OpenTelemetry, and many other sources. You can then process all of these data and send it to wherever you want. Uh, in this case, it will be a backend that's on the, on the Grafana Cloud stack. Um, that more or less what this picture depicts. And well, this has the benefit that you have a centralized configuration file, and it's an alloy, uh, and .alloy file that it, well, it has all of these configurations that I'll show you later. And yeah. Then you have OpenTelemetry. Uh, OpenTelemetry itself is um, not a program, it is a framework and toolkit so that you can instrument other applications and, well, essentially extract uh, some metrics, logs, or relevant information that you otherwise would not have access to. Because, well, uh, Alloy uh, is useful for processing already existing um, data. But if you want to generate it uh, from zero, you need something like OpenTelemetry. And well, that's, that's its basic functionality. It has some auto-instrumentation features on some libraries. In Python, for instance, there's instrumentation uh, already available for some libraries like uh, the Postgres uh, library that, that Odoo uses, PsychoPG. There's also a generic um, instrumentation for a, a Python WS GI server. And well, it has a lot of things. And well, I have something here if you want to look at it later. And now we get to the actual monitoring. So uh, I've prepared a small proof of concept for, for this purpose. And while you could uh, technically use anything, uh, and well, you, you can use an infrastructure, uh, which means I will be using Linux, but you could potentially, uh, by using Grafana Cloud, extract metrics from uh, anything you, you consider infrastructure, uh, Docker, Kubernetes, uh, or anything else. That would be at the infrastructure level. And then at the application level, uh, you can also have some uh, applications like Postgres or, or Traffic, uh, with, which, which come with uh, integrated dashboards and so on. And then Odoo, which uh, it doesn't have. Uh, that's uh, the first thing I, I thought uh, was, well, let's see if Odoo has any content related um, to, to Grafana some, or OpenTelemetry, some existing um, library, but I didn't find any, no, no modules. So I, I, I got to work and, and did something. Um, now, this is what you will see when, when you get to your instance in, in Grafana. Um, here I've already installed um, the integrations that, come, uh, that, that, that give you the dashboard and so on, but if you wanted to, you, you could simply go here to add new connection and well, install this and configure your sources. Uh, but I will use the ones I already have. So uh, the first of all uh, would be your infrastructure. So say you have a Linux server. In this case, this will be my machine. And you wanted to see well, how it was doing in terms of um, memory or network or whatever you want. Well, this is an integration that, uh, as I said, it already comes with, um, with Grafana Cloud. And you have essentially uh, an overview of all the machines. Uh, here I will be only focusing on my personal laptop. And uh, well, well, it doesn't matter, uh, it, which is this one. Uh, you can see it has some basic information on, on the load, the CPU usage, uptime, and so on. You can narrow it down to this one, and then you have a pre-built dashboard which comes with some useful information, generic information like CPU usage, memory, disk, network, so on. And while this, this, this is useful, you, you also have um, more specific information about, let's say, memory. Uh, so here's more, more dashboards about memory. Uh, and while you could, you get the gist of it, right? So you could, uh, use this information then to do other things. Uh, you could set up alerting and get some notification in Slack or whatever communication system you use. And then 
as I said, uh, at the application level, it also comes with some other pre-built dashboards. One of them is the Postgres one. Here, uh, you will see that well, there will be, there should be uh, some, not, not much information, but some information about how many queries are running per second, some information on, on, the, on the rows, the operations performed on them, and so on. And there's also one for traffic, which for some reason doesn't work that well. Uh, some of the, of the panels are not available, but uh, I guess they will fix it sometime, or maybe it's a misconfiguration on my, on my part. And then this is the part where, well, I think this is the important part of the talk, which is an integration for Odoo and uh, what we could get from it. So, well, first of all, I am not uh, an Odoo programmer primarily, so I am not really aware of all of the things uh, that some of you might be. So I try to instrument Odoo in some ways I believe are useful, but there are probably many more. And I've, I've narrowed it down to some that are feasible to do in a short amount of time. So here would be all of the deployments that we have. And they are listed uh, with a name, an environment, and a version. Uh, well, I only have one here, but uh, ideally there would be a lot more here. And you could narrow them down by, by the host name or, or the environment type. So if you are only trying to see what, what's happening in production, you could do that. And then for each of them, you can see their logs and metrics. In the, in the logs part, uh, you can see well, the, the logs. This is uh, basically a copy from what you could see in the, in the Linux uh, integration. But essentially, we can see here uh, if we are receiving logs, how, uh, how many, the, the volume here, which one was the latest time we received uh, logs, and then the logs themselves. You, you could sort them, I mean, you, you could filter them by, by keywords. You could search for error on the message, and you would only show this. Uh, if you, if you see that there are a lot of repeated log messages, that's because I'm running in the background a service that's generating dummy data only for testing purposes. Uh, so yeah, that's why there's only these requests all the time. Uh, and while this could be more useful um, if you filter, I guess, by, by some other things, but this is what I have now. And then the, the other... Uh, the important part maybe would be the metrics. Uh, again, this is something that I think uh, could be useful, but there are probably a lot of more interesting metrics. I've uh, essentially uh, registered um, the, the requests that are made to, to uh, Odoo, and I've, well, for one, I've uh, sorted them by count uh, for each of, 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 the, of the routes. Uh, they are grouped so that a request that is um, parameterized gets sorted into the, into the same one. So you can see here that dummy sleep has a thousand counts uh, for now. And you can see one. There, there are some more. These unknown is because, well, some, some issue. Um, and then this is a plot of the, the request rate uh, by state. By, by HTTP status. So these are the ones that are okay. And then these ones here, there are no, not many, uh, are the ones with uh, status codes for 400 and 500, which are some uh, forced errors that I'm, uh, into, I'm, uh, I'm raising from this dummy um, controller that I made. Uh, but uh, they could be any code, any HTTP code that is supported. Um, and then, there's some information regarding the response time. So you know what do when you see the logs, there are some, some numbers after the request, and these are the, the query time, the time, the time that it spends, uh, that Odoo, um, no, that a request spends while doing a query in Postgres. There's the remaining time, which is the time it doesn't, and then there's the query count, which is the number of queries that a request costs. This is, uh, well, this is an average over time, so, you can see it tied to a specific request, but you could do it, uh, ideally. I also thought about adding some metrics regarding uh, crons, but it was a bit difficult and I didn't end up doing it because it was more work and I didn't have time. 
And the other important thing uh, at some point would be um, doing traces. The, this would be, these are most, more costly because there's a lot of information packed into them. So when I tried it, there were some, some issues with um, the Grafana Cloud instance because of rate, rate limiting. Uh, so I would need to find a way to work around that, but it would be f uh, feasible. And then you could trace the request through all of um, all of the system, which in most systems it will be just uh, the Odoo service and then Postgres, but on more complex systems it, it could be uh, it could span more services and well, it could be easier with this to find hard to debug errors across across application layers. And well, that's essentially it. Uh, I have some uh, other interesting topics here listed that. While they are not covered, uh, it could be interesting in the future. Uh, this is mainly a proof of concept again, so it would be, be uh, it would benefit greatly from um, anyone that wants to check it out and maybe contribute something. Um, traces again are not covered here. Uh, profiling is not covered either. Load testing could be interesting. See how your system works under stress. Uh, K6 is one of the um, components of Grafana that, that does this. It allows you to write scripts that essentially um, load the application with well, whatever you, you say to it. Then there's also auto instrumentation at the, uh, not at the application level, but at the um, system level. Uh, that's Vela. Uh, it's another component from Grafana and it essentially hooks into the kernel and analyzes all the traffic and well, everything it can uh, to, to make a, to get a picture of the system. It, it doesn't um, need any code, so it would be interesting to see how that works, um, but again, out of the scope. And then also something I did, I did mention but uh, did not get into is alerting. Uh, it has, Grafana has an, an, a service called OnCall, which allows you to set all of these alerts and well, a lot of things up. And, and well, uh, you, you could essentially use it um, to notify anything you want. You could uh, use it to notify it to your mail or if you have, uh, again, a Slack or Element or some, some other notification system, you, you, could, you could do that. And, and well, the, the last topic would be self-hosting because, well, as I said, the free tier is free, but it does come with some limitations. Uh, it has a, a limit of uh, logs ingestion per month. Uh, it has a limit of active series in the in the metrics department, and well, it, it has some limitations. But again, uh, if you just want to give it a try, uh, I believe that the free tier is, is enough to test maybe um, 10 deployments, maybe even, because, well, if you are not uh, pulling a lot of metrics uh, or traces that, that, that are costly, uh, it really, you have room for a lot of, of monitoring. So yeah, that's essentially it. And if you have any questions, I will be glad to answer them. <laughs>